Hey everyone, the wedding song. Welcome to Someone Should Have Told Me. Marriage is not for the weak at heart. You know, one day me and my husband was in the store. And this couple, they were so happy. And it was like, oh, my God, we're getting married. We're getting married. And my husband looked and he said, let me tell you, it ain't for the weak at heart. And my neck snapped. And I was like, what the heck is he saying? But then when we got in the car, I said, what you mean by it? It's not for the weak at heart. He said, listen to the words that I am saying. This ain't easy. And I started thinking, yeah, yeah, but I'm the best wife ever. And he like, it still ain't easy. And I started to think about it. And he is absolutely right. You got two people from two different families, two different ways of living, two different ways that they have been taught to grow up. Many, many things are different. And then you're talking about till death do us part. And you didn't got on my nerves three or four times within an hour. Can death do us part? Really? Well, that is what marriage is supposed to be. It is not easy. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I never do. I'm not going to lie to you. It is not easy. And then you add kids into it and everything, and it becomes very complicated. But you make it through. And it is a journey that is wonderful and worth it. Now, first of all, you need to get the ground foundation together. Who do you want to be married to? You need to be married to your friend. You need to be married to your best friend. Other than that, you have no good foundation. First of all, if it's your friend, you have some things in common. I know that I have told you guys once before, way in the beginning of the start of my podcast, how me and my husband met and how we got married within six weeks, six weeks. And we have been married for 36 years. Now, a story about that. I lost a year somewhere, but I blame my husband because this year I was like, oh my God, we're going to be married 35 years. I'm going to maybe, maybe we'll have a party. We need to do something. This is a milestone. Oh my goodness. And then my parents passed away in July and my anniversary is in August. And I was like, oh, well, so I'm talking to my cousin on the phone and I tell her, oh, I've been married 35 years. I got married in 1986. And she said, you got married in 1986? I said, yeah. And she said, well, I think it's 36 years. I'm like, no, 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 no. She said, actually, I graduated high school in 1986, and I've been out of school 36 years this year. I went to Counton. Oh, my goodness. She's right. Oh, my goodness. How did I miss a year? And then I thought about it. My husband, every time that we had an anniversary, he would hike it up a year. So if I'm married 34 years, on the 34th wedding anniversary, he would take it to 35. If I'm married 35 years, then on the 35th wedding anniversary, he's going to take it to 36. So I got a little confused because I'm always like, stop it. We are not married that extra year until we get there. You don't know if we're going to make it because... Marriage is very hard. And there are people that get separated in in the later years as well. Not that I was thinking that we would, but let the year get to be 
what the year is. So I blame him because he was confusing me. So come to find out, we've been married 36 years this year. So that's my first example that marriage is not for the weak at heart because he makes me so sick when he does that. And it's just something small and slight. But guess who he's blaming for forgetting a year? Me. How did you forget a year? He is so, so funny. Now, let me make something perfectly clear. I am not telling anyone to get married in six weeks. Not telling you to do it. I feel like I did it because my husband approached me and wanted to get married. And, you know, I told you guys he asked me to marry him on the first date. I had known him. He had did my hair. He was doing my hair. I came to him to get some conditioner after I hadn't been to him in a while. And my sister had dated his father. And that was still going on. And we went out and he was like, oh, my God, marry me. And I was like, he's crazy. And then the second date, he gave me the keys to his house. And I was like, ah. No, I don't want no keys to your house. And he's like, please, please, please. I said, okay, never taking the keys. I'm never using the keys, excuse me. And then he called me the next day and said, I got gifts on the table for you. You need to go get them and use your key. And I was like, okay. So that's how that went. And then when he bought me a ring, because after... Three weeks, I end up saying yes, because he asked me every single day, and I had said I weighed the pros and the cons, and he said he didn't have no cons, which we know now that that's not true, but he's still a good man. <laughs> but he said that he was tired of dating, and he wanted to make a commitment to someone that he could spend the rest of his life with and he didn't want to play any games anymore and he wanted to get started and start his foundation and get his family together and I was his choice. And he used to say, you know, you're the first person that I've ever had to chase. Everybody else is usually chasing me and now I'm chasing you. I gave in. It's been a roller coaster of a ride but it's like I love roller coasters and I love my husband I don't know if I had of dated him for a very very long time would I still have married him that's a big question because you know our backgrounds was so very different my father a minister his father a motorcycle gang president. Oh my goodness. Two totally ends of the spectrum. He has a very good heart, a very big heart. Even though my father was the minister, my husband's heart was bigger than mine. He was more giving than I was. I was attracted to that part of him, that sweetness, that goodness, that that brought us together. I am happy to have spent these 36 years with him. He is a good guy. So with that being said, what works for one person doesn't always work for another. So I am not advocating that somebody run out and get married in six weeks. You got plenty of time. Take your time. Make sure you're making the right choices. At least feel good with your choices. So I was talking to someone at work and I happened to see a post that she had put on Facebook and it was so beautiful. It made me want to do this podcast because so many people have been coming to me talking about their marriages. I thought this was the perfect way to explain it. So it was her anniversary and she wrote this to her husband. Love isn't perfect. 
It isn't a fairy tale or a storybook, and it doesn't always come easy. Love is overcoming obstacles, facing challenges, and fighting to be with each other. Holding on, never letting go. Love is a short word, easy to spell, difficult to define, and nearly impossible to live without once you have it. Love is work. But most of all, love is realizing that every hour, every minute, every second of it is worth it because we did it together. Happy 10 years of marriage with a lifetime of love to go. I love you so much. I was just taken in by that. That was so wonderful. And I told her, I'm like, you sum that up perfectly because love isn't perfect. And if you are looking for a perfect love, then you're going to have to keep looking because we're not perfect. And then you take two of us imperfect people and you put us together. And so we are going to work through some things. You can't take a whole bunch of advice from people because your situation is never going to be like another person's situation. It may be similar, but it's not going to be the same. And so you're not going to even tell another person everything because you can't. You can't remember every detail of a situation. And most of the time, the detail you're going to leave out is what you did. So therefore, you need not take advice. You need to go within yourself and think within yourself about all the details and what went on to make your decisions of what you need to do next. Mary J. Blige has a song called What Love Is. Look it up on YouTube. It is an amazing song. And I remember we had went to a beach house. My family would rent out a beach house. Um, Most of the time it was in North Carolina, Myrtle Beach, something like that. And we would rent a big beach house. We all would put in, we all have our own bedroom and we would have the house on the beach. One night we were at the beach house and my husband was so happy. I think this was the very first time we had went to a beach house and he was so happy. And even though, you know, he always would be talking about being with my family and doing things with my family because he's jealous because his family is not close knit like mine. And, you know, I tell you all the time that he tries to just hold me tight and keep me to himself and never want me to just be with everyone. But the beach house was a different story. How often are you going to get a chance to go to a beach house huge beach house right off the beach where you walk off the porch and you're on the beach. How often is that going to happen? So he did not complain about that. And he started singing Mary J. Blige's song, What Love Is to My Parents, as he and I were on our way to a nighttime beach walk. And Mary J. Blige's song, What Love Is, talks about how beautiful, horrible, terrible, reason to make you smile, reason to cry yourself to sleep at night, start a fight, break up, make up, wrong or right. Heaven is all it's worth. It can easily be hell right here on earth or it can be heaven. And it can be everything all wrapped up together. The thing is, you keep working at it. And that is why the phrase is, you can't be weak at heart to get it done. Because sometimes you have to come out of your character. I used to tell that to my husband because when I first got married, I was 23 
about to be 24. He was 20. He was 23, about to be 24. I was 22, about to be 23. As he asked me so quickly and we got married within the six weeks, I had grew up in church. So therefore, once I got married, I'm thinking, oh, this is wonderful. We just love each other and we're just going to build upon everything. And it's just going to be like, leave it to beaver back in the day and be like my parents. And it's like, who wouldn't like my parents? I used to say that as a child. I don't have no worries. Everybody loved my parents because I had seen my sisters go through some things where they didn't like their in-laws. And I'm like, oh my God, that must be horrible. But I am going to stay on the subject. And I just thought when I got married that we just get together and just work towards loving each other, having a family and doing everything. I didn't even take another second look at another man. And then when men would be looking at me, I'd be like, I'm married, I'm married. And then, oh my goodness. And so time went on. And of course, first year, second year. So we, we had our first child in 1989. And I went through a pretty decent pregnancy, but you know, being pregnant is not ideal for a person to be feeling all wonderful and, and you just look wonderful. So it's up to your mate to build you up, take your shopping, get you some stuff or up to yourself. Keep yourself looking wonderful and good. But before that, I had noticed that um, my husband does hair, remember? So women would be after him more so after we got married than even before we got married. They would try to see if they could put a wrinkle in his armor. That's his words, by the way. He always say, then they can't see a wrinkle in my armor. But <laughs> he is he is a character. I couldn't believe that once you got married, instead of people pushing themselves away and looking the other way, instead, it's drawing more people to him. I had this one young lady who was his assistant, shampoo, and then they say stuff to you like, he really loves you. Well, of course, we're married, and that's what married people do, and that's what happens. That's why we got married. So one day he's at the salon and he goes in to say something to the girl. They're like cleaning up for the day. And he walks into the shampoo room and she's standing there with her shirt off, completely topless. She knew me. She knew that we were married. She was tempting him, thinking that all men going to see some breast and want to just go haywire. Well, he told her to put her shirt back on and stop embarrassing herself. And then he came home and told me. Now I am furious because I know this person and I'm like, oh my God, how dare her? Blah, 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 blah. But he was like, you have no worries. You don't have to say anything to her. I'm not going to fire her. Like, what? Oh, yes, you are going to fire her, blah, blah, blah. He was like, you have no worries. I'm not going to fire her. She's just someone who has lost her way. And she's a good worker. She just needs to understand that is unacceptable. I'm like, oh, my God. So you can't even tell her you know. I'm like, I can't tell her I know. No, you can't even tell her you know. I'm telling you. Because you are my best friend, you are my wife, and I needed to talk and tell someone, and you are it. Now you have to act like you don't know. Oh my goodness, I did. Then I would feel sorry for her because in the long run, it's sad. It's sad that 
She felt the need that she had to try to force herself on a man and then a married man at that. But what if he had been someone different? What if he had been someone that took advantage of that situation? She didn't last much longer as a worker after that. That was one of the first things that we had encountered. That made me love him even more. I still wasn't looking at any other man or whatever. Now, that don't mean that he has been perfect the whole way through. Years go by, I was working and it was this young lady and we hadn't even like talked about what what we wanted as a couple as far as the opposite sex. We hadn't talked about no rules or anything like that. You know, it's assumption most of the time. But what happened, I had had our son and I was working doing home care. So therefore, I drove my patients around. I had patients that we would go out to eat at restaurants. We would go to the park. We would just go for a drive. We would go anywhere he wanted to go. I got paid mileage and we would go. I think I took care of him from 11 to 5. So I would get there and give him a shower and then take him out for a ride, my one favorite patient. And so one day I stopped at home. And when I got there, it was a car in my driveway. And when I went in the house, it was this woman sitting in the house. My baby was there and he had to be maybe one. And my husband was there. So when I walked in the house, he said, oh, you don't have to take me now. I, my wife is home. I got a ride. And so she left. And I didn't even remember seeing her before, but she was my husband's client. And he had went to high school with her. So he knew her. He had told her to ask her to come and take them to the store or I don't even remember exactly where. But when I got home and I seen that woman sitting in my house, she she left when I got there and she said, okay, and how you doing? And blah, blah, blah. I lit up when she left out. First of all, You don't have nobody in here around my baby. Second of all, who is she? You don't need no ride to go nowhere until I get home. If you, because we only had one car. If you need something, you can call anybody else. You don't call no woman to take you nowhere. You don't call no woman, but she just my client. We friends. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no, no. I am a person that once we get married, ain't no opposite sex friends because people are people. They are gonna be either talking about the wife or talking about the, the husband. I don't care. People always want people to like them. Like, oh, he married, but he likes me. And some stuff like that. No, 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 no. Your job stays at your job. Our home is our home. No, anybody can't come here. And I'm not trying to be friends with everybody up at the salon, all your clients or whatever. And you can't have no friends. That's not my friend. Because we are a entity. We are one. Can't nobody come and be your friend and not be my friend. So therefore, this cannot happen anymore. So that was our first big bump in the road. I was so furious. And if I hadn't stopped at home, I don't know what would have happened. So, okay, okay. So then we had a mutual friend. I had uh, went to manicuring school because I was like okay I'm gonna get my manicuring license and then I'm gonna be able to at least do nails on the side maybe we'll get a salon eventually and we will be in business together so we had a mutual friend I had met her in 
school when I was doing manicuring. I was at work. She had stopped by to see me and she's like, oh, I forgot she was at work. And then he asked her to take him to the comic book store because he collects comic books. Well, she called me first <laughs> to tell me that he wanted her to go to the comic book store. So they both on the phone. And then I said, well, go ahead. I don't care. I'm trying to work. And then she made him sit in the back seat because she was like, I don't want nobody to see us and think we together and think that we out here doing something that we're not supposed to be doing. So you need to sit in the back seat. So she took him, but she made him sit in the back seat <laughs> like she was driving Mr. Daisy. That was the respect that she gave to us as a couple. And she's also the person I think I mentioned in another podcast that she had some friends that was dating a married man. And she was like, oh, my God, he's my soulmate. And she said to her friend, well, how many souls he got? Because I'm sure he told his wife that she was his soulmate, too. And that was so funny to me. <laughs> that was so funny. And so I'm like, that is so true. So that was that, that second big incident. And so then we had to set out some ground rules because in the very beginning of our marriage, my husband's best man, he could not believe that his friend was getting married. He just couldn't believe it. He was like, I can't believe you're getting married. All these women be after him and he chose you. So I think he wanted to see why out of all the women that clients, whatever, that my husband could would be involved in, he wanted to see what was it about me that made my husband want me so bad and so quickly. And so my husband worked at a salon down the street from our house. And so he's at work. And then his friend calls and he was like, I know, I just want to come over and wait for Vincent until he gets off from work. And I didn't have no good sense about that. So therefore, I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know, it's his friend. Come on over and he'll be home soon. So he came over and I and him was talking and he just kept asking. So what is it about you that he is? He has changed. She has become this individual that is even better than he was before he met you. And it's like, what is it about you? I'm like, I don't know. I am who I am. I don't have no idea. And so he kept on and then he was following me around the house. And then he was like, maybe, maybe we can uh, do some cocaine. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. He's like, come on, come on. Like, no, are you kidding me? I said, no. He's like, I think it was my birthday. He said, it's your birthday. And I, that's what I brought. And I was like, no, I don't do that. And so my husband came home and he was still there. I think we had ordered some food and stuff. And he kept saying, I'm trying to get your wife to so she can have some fun. And my husband said, you stop right there. She said, no. Leave her alone. She said, no. And why are you here anyway? I'm at work down the street. Why you didn't come down there where I am? I'm like right down the street. He was like, I wanted to see what it is that made you marry her so fast. I wanted to see what, what it was that you were so drawn to. I mean, she's a nice looking lady. She's a nice personality. And but I mean, it's plenty of women out there. I just wanted to see. He was like, it's not for you to see. I see it and it's what I wanted. And therefore, don't you come over here no more when I'm not here. Don't come over here because I am your friend that, and we could all be friends, but you don't come visit my wife while I'm not here. That was the start of 
that and that happened. That was the first incident. And then we had to go through it. So each incident, you learn more about each other and you may make up some rules along the way. It's all a work in progress. And at each situation, you are the one that decides if you can deal with this or you can't. If you're going to deal with it and it get better. And I'm going to tell you, it only gets better of the reaction of the person that's wrong. If they are truly remorseful, you can be okay with it if it never happens again. But if they're not remorseful and they're, you're like, why am I dealing with this? And this might go over a little bit, but it was one incident, long, long, long. We had been married. Probably we were about to buy our first house. And my husband had ran into someone that he used to have a crush on when he was younger. And we had both our kids at this time. And he had ran into her. So, you know, a crush is a crush. And we've been married a while now because now I got two kids. So it's in the 90s. Of course, we had been through some things and things were moving along. And he ran into this lady and he might have thought that he might have wanted to end our marriage. Go be with this lady who is now accepting him that he had a crush on. And so a couple nights he came home late. And I remember one night when he came home late and he came in the side door. And when he came in the side door, I had my fist ready and I punched him as soon as he walked in the door. And then, of course, that created a a problem, you know, swinging on somebody. But um, (laughs) I think he kind of learned the lesson and we argued or whatever. He said, Abby, I'm playing video games with her brother and she lives across the street. And I was like, well... Your family is here and you shouldn't be playing video games or nothing and with anyone. He was like, I can have friends or whatever. So it didn't last much longer after this. But the one time that he was late coming home and I called the so-called friend's house, which it was he she had two brothers and he was playing video games with the brothers. But. Her father answered the phone and I told her father, I said, you know, is my husband over there? And I think your daughter is kind of sweet on my husband. He was like, oh, yeah, he a ni- he's married. And I was like, yeah, I'm his wife. We have two kids, blah, blah, blah. And I would like for your daughter to back up off my husband and Tell my husband that if he don't come home, he's not going to have a wife. And so he wasn't even there at the time. The girl who lived across the street trying to prey on my husband, she told him that I made her father's cancer flare up when I called. First of all, I'm in the healthcare field and (laughs) you cannot make no cancer flare up by a phone call. Now, maybe he was upset and scolded her, but there is nothing that I could have done that would have made his cancer flare up. But my husband didn't know that. And he's like, you made her father's cancer flare up. And I just laughed in his face. And I was like, listen, this is something that I'm not going to put up with. You better make your decisions, make your choices now, because I don't think That I am going to move into our new house with you because we were had found our house and we were getting things together to move. I'm not going to move with you if this is going to continue because I'm not going to live like that. So we need to stop right now. We need to stop right now and just go our separate ways. And I walked out the house and I went for a walk because I was so upset. When I came back, he said, I love you and I love our kids. I don't want to live without you. And I will never, ever go over that way 
again. And I will never, ever put you through anything else like this again. I was like, okay. You know, it wasn't that quick of a conversation, but a long drawn out. But basically, that was the gist of the conversation. We moved, but the woman started calling. She started calling my house. And she would call my house. She called and she said, can I speak to Vincent? And I said, of course. So I went and gave Vincent the phone, but I did not hesitate to pick up the other phone so that I can hear what she was saying. Like, what are you calling for? And how he was going to react because it don't matter what she said. It don't matter what I say. It matters what he says and how he reacts to this situation with her. Because I want to know. We both, and he knew I picked up the phone. It, I was not secretive about it. So what this woman said on the phone, she said, you know that I've been divorced and you know I just want to walk down the aisle one more time. And I thought that we could have a future. So he said to her, I am so very sorry if I gave you any wrong impression. But I love my wife and I love my family and I have a family. And I am sorry if I have misled you in any way. But I do love my wife and I love my family. And then I broke in and I said, and do you think you might want to choose somebody that isn't already married? My goodness. Do you think that he would stay with you after leaving me and his own family? That's what I don't understand. People thinking that they're the special ones. And if they're going to leave their family and their children, then how do you think they're going to stay with you? But you know I have went way over my time and I enjoy talking to you guys so much. I hope that you got something out of this and know that you can't take marriage lightly. It is not always easy. It is not perfect, but it is worth it. I love you all. I love talking to you. You can email me at SSH. TM podcast at gmail.com. You can listen to me at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube. If you're going to YouTube, please type in my name, N O R L Y N D A, Murray, M U R R Y, and I have a whole channel. I will talk to you guys soon. Love you. Have a great week. Bye.